Hey friends, it's Amanda May with Ardith Design. Back for my fifth floss tube video to talk about counted cross stitch and all things save the stitches. So welcome back to my channel. I am extremely, extremely happy that you came back. And if you just found me for the first time, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. I want to show you all my save the stitches this week. I had a massive haul a weekend adventure in Maryland and found some awesome stuff. I want to share with you a couple of my new patterns, a couple of my new books that came out, and intertwined in all of this is my sustainability station uh, with the Save the Stitches and, you know, just really thinking about recycling, reusing, upcycling, and just having fun with stitching and with crafts. I just... Oh, I can't wait to show you everything that I got. So let me get started by saying thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed to my channel on Friday at, I don't know, 9 a.m. Pacific time. I'm out here in Maryland. I look at my YouTube and I reached 100 subscribers, which is so awesome. I am so, so, so excited. And I told my husband I reached a, a hundred followers and he says, well, what do you want to do to celebrate? And I said, I want to go find more goodies to show in my next video. Can we go on a treasure hunt? He's like, of course we can go on a treasure hunt. So that's what we did on Saturday. We went to one of the buffets and absolutely ate our hearts out. And then we went and went to some barn sales, some yard sales, and then we hit up a couple of the secondhand thrift store charity shop type things and I was blown away by what I found and so this is gonna be literally most of this video is gonna be just what I got this weekend in my celebratory I'm on YouTube and I have at least 100 people in the world watching me so here we go we're gonna start I had seen it. it's on the cover of one I can't remember what issue but I found this one at a barn sale. I could not believe it. I literally in the barn, like in the dusty old barn in the back, they had this Victorian style crib and inside was a bunch of stuff. And I started digging around and I asked the lady, I said, hey, do you have any cross stitch? She's like, what? So I started digging around and I found this and it was, it was pretty dirty <laughs> and wrinkled. So I, I ended up buying it and came home and I immediately cleaned it and pressed it. Uh, and I just love it. It's, it's marked Jill, um, 1992. And I'm debating what I want to do with it. My husband said it's not his style. So I'm... <laughs> It might end up going on my eBay store, but I'm not sure if I should finish it, you know, Priscillify it and then put it up for sale or just roll it up and send it off to a good home. I, it, it was, it was creased and I, I, I think I ironed it about 15 times over and over again, just trying to get the, the creases of the vintage Ada out. And unfortunately the, the color of the Ada had been stained this like brown from being folded and unfortunately I did I do have a creasing stain which I'm not happy about I wish I could have just really 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 cleaned it but I got see you can see the crease staining here from it being folded and then in an old barn I I I, I wanted to mount it and Priscillify it like I said but my husband's like I don't know you you have enough flowers do we need more flowers and the answer is always yes you can always use more flowers but I don't know we'll see what happens so I am super excited to find that piece I really like it and oh I found a quilt which I was really excited about it's a wall hanging quilt and uh, it's actually one of the first quilts that I have found that has been marked and it has the artist's name on it and I actually bought it sight unseen. It was, well, I shouldn't say sight unseen, but it was, I'm gonna roll it up to show you how I found it. It was like this in the thrift store. The trees were all like crumpled down. 
they had like the masking tape they had shellacked it down basically and they had a price on it and I said you know what I'm gonna pay that price to un to see what's under here and I thought worst case scenario if it, it's totally trashed or if it's not a real quilt or whatever this hanging rod is awesome it's got the dowel um, and it, it comes up so I was like I'm gonna take a chance I'm just gonna get it so I did and I came home and I quick I carefully had to cut down all the tape and then I had to use Goo Gone uh, to take off all the tape that the residue thankfully it came right off and it didn't leave anything on the quilt uh, but here it is I am so excited this is I mean talk about treasure hunting and I I know I come from a place of privilege when I say that I was able to just spend money on something I didn't know it was inside but I kind of liken it to you know people that go to comic-con and buy the mystery boxes for five six ten dollars I think the Funko Pop surprises, you know, you don't know what you're gonna get. You know you're gonna get something, but half of the excitement is finding out what's inside. So anyway, <laughs> look at this. Look at what I got. Beautiful cardinal, hand stitched and pieced. Look at that and it's marked and I, I had, did not do my due diligence in my research yet. It's marked um, the maker 1996 in uh, West Virginia and her her name I have not researched it yet though I'm not I don't know the story on this I don't know who made this or if this was uh, if this was custom or something you could just buy at a hobby store but I just love this and this is gonna be a really nice addition to my holiday decorations I have cardinals in my yard, um, male and female um, that nested in front, right in front of my office window. So I get to see them every day. So I just thought it was such a nice treat to be able to get a cardinal wall hanging. All right, the next Save the Stitches I got was, had just been brought out at the store. So it's not like it was sitting there lingering or that they told me they were gonna throw it out or anything like that. I saw it, I said, yep, I gotta have it. And so I grabbed it. Now. This piece, I want to say to you that it's not my style. And I bought it thinking that it's a really good uh, piece of needle art for a movie prop, for a show prop, for somebody who maybe stitched it for their child and the child went off to school. Or a lot of people, believe it or not, if there's multiple siblings, one person might get the needlework and the other person wants it can't find it the pattern is gone so they go on ebay to find a replacement or one so they have a copy so brother and sister both have the same piece type of thing so that's why i picked this up it's professionally framed it is a horse the country scene it's dated 1986 so it's 32 years old professionally framed i don't know who framed it but it's it's perfection the stitches are perfect everything about it is perfection again not my style but you have to remember that a lot of us eBayers were not these horrible people out to take all of your money or to rip you off or to do anything like that I, I do sell on eBay in order to pay my bills uh, but I also love hearing the stories of reuniting needle art with people people stitching for their now grandchildren. Oh, I stitched this for my daughter. Now I'm stitching it for my grandson. People who have lost things in a fire, literally um, like the car fire in Northern California, people losing their Christmas stockings, losing their their needlework and not having the time to replace it, but they, uh, as far as restitching it, but they do have maybe 10, 15, 20, 40, 50 bucks to pay for the replacement that's up online. So that is one of the one of the reasons why I do pick up stuff. If I know that if I think that it can be rehomed. So again, welcome. <laughs> These next oh not yet. Okay. Uh this piece I picked up 
when I looked at it, I saw that it had some condensation damage and so I do need to clean it. The humidity here in Maryland is pretty gnarly. I mean, it's not as bad as the deep south here in the United States, but the, it, the piece is behind glass so that it's not been able to breathe. And I do need to pull it out of the glass and wash it. But it is the Amish laundry scene. And I picked up an old washboard and I thought it would be really cool to display it. Uh, I've sold this kit before. I want to say it's dimensions, but I can't, I can't quite remember. But again, it's got um, some film on it. So I, it needs to be taken out of the glass and washed and repressed. I wanted to give an update before I show you the rest of my haul. I want to sh give an update on this save the stitches that I got last year I had this feeling like it just it had to come home with me and it's this angel and I had said in I believe in my first video that it the frame is all icky and I need to reframe it but the stitching is gorgeous everything's fine with the Ada nothing needs it doesn't need to be cleaned but I, I I saw this piece and it triggered something in me that I, I needed to bring it home with me well in my haul this weekend, I ended up finding the um, free angel pattern from 2000 from Lavender and Lace. The designer, unfortunately, she passed away in 2012, but she is the designer for Butternut Road, Told in a Garden, and Lavender and Lace. And every year in Lavender and Lace, she released a Christmas angel, a free pattern that you could have and download for personal use. Well, her, uh-oh, my pug is barking. Hold on. Oopsie daisy, sorry about that. This is Raji Bubby Pug. He is going on 14. I've had him since he was six years old and he just loves to bark. He loves to sit at the window and bark at everyone. He's my senior pug. I rescued him. Uh, through the Mid-Atlantic Pug Rescue. They do tremendous work and they help uh, rescue pugs from South Carolina up to New Jersey. That whole kind of Mid-Atlantic region, I believe they have uh, pugs sometimes come out of Tennessee. And it's just a really amazing organization. So that's my, that's my senior pug, Raji. He was barking. Sorry about that. All right. I wanted to just kind of touch bases on this angel pattern. I did my research and found out that this pattern is still available. The, uh, it looks like the family who, the family of uh, Marilyn are continuing her website. It has not been updated since 2012, but all of the free patterns from Lavender and Lace are uh, available. And it's told in a garden, the acronym T I um, told in T I N. Oh, I'll, I'll link it. <laughs> Sorry, I was a whole language learner, and I I am a horrible, horrible, horrible speller. I really kind of wish that I was born a couple decades earlier so I could have learned phonics. I, I like to say that that's why I'm an artist because I can't spell. I don't know what it is about a whole language learner, but Spelling bees would just scare me so badly because I can't, I can't see the word and how it's spelled. I have to physically handwrite it. <laughs> and even then I'm a horrible speller. Anywho, I'll, I'll link it below the Lavender and Lace website if you're interested in the angels. What really touched me about this angel was it, and I'm, I'm reading from the pattern here. It says, we hope that you use scraps of rainbow pink or blue or silver metallics and special threads with this little angel she was especially designed for the angel project this worldwide group stitches blankets for neonatal babies sometimes these blankets are the only thing that parents have to take home she can also be done as a Christmas angel by making her baby's blanket in gold and her overskirt in bodice in reds and the underskirt and sleeves and greens with gold beads with a little red shoe peeking out. So either, you know, an angel baby if you've lost a baby 
or if you just want as a Christmas angel. I really like that there's the double sentiment and if you wanted to stitch this in time for the uh, October is the in the United States the National um, Infant Loss Awareness Month. If you've lost a child um, either miscarried, um, stillborn, or the death, um, SIDS, um, so I'm, I'm going to be probably working on a pattern, an acknowledgement of uh, parents and gestational caregivers who have um, lost their little ones. Okay, I again, uh, the Lavender and Lace website, Tolden and Garden. All right, I'm going to go through the rest of my haul that I got this weekend, my celebratory 100 subscribers. I picked up some kits. I have not even gone through them yet. I, I I picked these up at a church rummage sale and again uh, I feel like a broken record saying this but they said oh if you don't take these these are gonna get thrown away and I said yuppie dippy I've got some money to give the church donation don't throw them away so I got uh, a partially worked on you know what let's just open it up and see what's here uh, again masking tape um, the duct tape stuff is the worst though. Oh my gosh. If you, anything with duct tape, it's, <laughs> all right. So what do we have? Oh, and there we got a needle. Well, not too far along, but it looks like they gritted it out. Okay. And it doesn't smell. Sometimes it has a musty odor if it's been in the plastic too long. Uh, okay. And it is, and it's got, oh, it's got the thread organizer. Nice. And it's got, it says it's, in Love United, designed by uh, Karen Avery. United in Love. Okay, so it looks like a wedding, a rose wedding piece. That's cool. It looks like it's on 14 count white Ada. And it's got, it's got the whole kit and it started, so that's neat. The next one I know is an embroidery kit. And, oh, it's, it is um, Crowell. Looks like this is the finish. I really like the uh, colors. They're really vibrant. And this is a gnarly organizer here. Okay. Whew. All right. I don't, I have not tried Crowl yet, um, but I love the look of it. Again, I have some butterfly pieces and some floral pieces in my collection. So let's see. Okay. No needle. Yeah, no needle. Oh, and it started. All right, so they looks like they did the, that's really neat. Looks like African violets or maybe, no, pansies or those pansies. Okay, uh, what else do we have here? Okay, this is the final kit that I got. I bought Sight Unseen, not sure. Masking tape. Of course, the threads got caught. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, all right, this one needs to even be washed. Okay, what do we have? Oh, so started in the center. Looks like this is the same stitcher because this has got gritted as well. Alrighty. And this is a gnarly floss organizer. Uh, a for effort. I like uh, handmade stuff. I actually made a floss organizer. I want to show you guys at the end of the video if you want to stick around for that. So that's cool. Big floss organizer. It's a sunset kit. Oh, it's okay. Here it is. It's a sunset kit by Joan Elliott. Awesome. So it looks like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this stuff. I have so many opened kits or kits that got kitted up that I, I just have in my collection. I, I don't know what to do with them. There's, there's so much stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay. I need to set that down. Okay. I'm not getting to that. Uh, oh, I got in my haul another uh, freebie, the lavender and lace, which again, you can print out uh, on the website. And then I got a, and I can't show you the pattern, it's just the pattern, but it's a little tiny uh, Busy Bees uh, pattern. It's really cute. It's, it's uh, from 2003. And it's a bees with a little with a little hive. It looks like it could be a card or something, maybe a couple hour stitch. 
so I, I got that pattern. This was really fun. I don't know if any of you follow me on Instagram, but I actually did a, a button art uh, and Colonial Knots kind of freehand heart thing. And then look at what I found. Isn't that cute? I didn't make that. But I love it. I, I have an affinity for buttons. I love, love buttons. So, of course, when I saw that, I said, yep, you got to come home with me. And they, I mean, it's really heavily embossed. Not embossed. Uh, bedazzled? Decorated? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I have some more stuff. I bought uh, a bag of threads. I saw the DMC. A lot of people say like they can't find threads and stuff in their thrift stores and secondhand shops. And actually I have had more luck finding opened kits with floss than I have actually finding just flosses or flosses and baggies. I picked this up. I did pay uh, 50 cents for this bag and 50 cents, it was worth it to me because it came with two skeins of this uh, Light Effects uh, DMC floss. And it's the really fun metallic. So I, I got it. I've never used the color before. It's a silver. And I thought, you know, for 50 cents, I'm going to, it's worth it. If you can supplement your stash with secondhand threads, it's great. My number one thing that I always do with threads, though, is... If you can, some stores don't allow you to open the bags or they're they're sealed shut. But you are taking a gamble sometimes when you buy secondhand threads. If they're in a bag and you can't smell them, if they're musty, if they're musty, I, mm, mm -mm. so that's just a tip if you have never purchased secondhand threads before, is that if they're clean and they don't smell musty. All right, I got a hoop. I paid fifty cents for this hoop. Written fifty cents in Sharpie. I thought it was really neat. It's of course not a duchess hoop, but I still got it for um, my colonial knot projects. I've really enjoyed working with these hoops. I got, these are so fun. I love craft supplies. So I got the moving eyes and they're like little buttons so you can uh, sew them on. And then I got the emerald green sequins. I think half the fun with finding vintage craft supplies is the packaging itself. Even if the craft supply has been open, the packaging that kind of mid-century or 70s and 80s, it can be really fun. So it's, again, little treasures. I got a kit. It's a placemat. And it's like pinwheel flowers. And it's stamped cross-stitch. And I thought it was neat. I've never done a stamped cross-stitch. I've only ever done counted cross-stitch. But I picked that up. And then I got this piece and much to my surprise, it was done and it's perfect. It doesn't need to be cleaned. It doesn't need any stitching. It doesn't, it doesn't need anything. And I'm so excited. It, it's a bread cloth and it's got the daffodils. Ah, I love it so much. And it, this was folded and taped down. So I didn't know if it was completed or what. I assume when I got it like this and it was taped and I, I saw that it was a daffodil and I knew it was a bread cover or I assumed it was a bread cover because of the fringed uh, and I have a lot of patterns that are just bread cover patterns and I don't I don't want to put my fresh baked bread in here I don't want to mess up the stitching so anywho uh, I, I, I just saw a portion of this so I didn't know if it was done or not and Da, 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 da. It was it both sides were done when I unraveled it. It was like the best little surprise So daffodil bread, <laughs> I think I'll probably use it as a table runner. I Have a really lovely Vera Newman daff spring daffodil uh, uh, Table cloth that I bring out in the spring so that might be really nice with it All right, I got these they were in the napkin like the home goods section of the secondhand store it was really cool this weekend after coming home from my adventure i watched long dog stitcher um d a double g out of alabama and she was showing how she was stitching on a fancy uh linen napkin or placemat and about her awesome 
linens that she gets kind of as gifts and she's like they're too fancy to actually use so why don't I just stitch on it so it's interesting how I I had the same thought but she of course posted before me but I got these really cool linen pieces out of the uh, the kitchen section of the secondhand store and I paid a little more than I had anticipated but I thought they were really awesome autumn colors and I want to see what I can kind of do with it I apologize if you hear pitter patter in the in the background that's my pug he's pacing he's like why are you doing a video I'm supposed to be on your lap <laughs> so sorry about that uh, I, I anyway I don't know what these originally were for because they seem too small to be hankies and too small to be napkins, but they're linen and they're, they've got the really nice autumn color. I don't know if anybody wants to comment and tell me what they think they are for. I, I love to learn. <laughs> so I got those. I'm not sure again what I'm going to do with them, but I love the autumn colors. I got a really neat little beaded Mill Hill kit. It's got the white dove. And it's got all the beads in the back and the perforated paper and then I got I love the chalkboard look I have been doing a lot of chalkboard art and so anytime I see anything gray or black regardless of Ada even weave linen I, I grab it so this is actually 25 count Lugana in black and it's a brand new 50 uh, 15 or 5 by 18 piece so excited to get that and then I got this is so awesome I squealed when I got these because I just thought I was buying one kit painted needlepoint canvas by Jody designs I thought I was just buying the one kit here no I came home and I, I wanted it I was like why are these directions so thick why are they so thick oh there's three sets of directions well why are there three sets of directions because Amanda you silly goose there's three kits hand painted holiday made in this stick hand uh, kits look at that a for Amanda I could not believe it so three needlepoint kits, I feel totally like I looked out on, like, again, treasure hunting. 100 subscribers! And then I got, when I get a grab bag, I got all of the little ornament, you know, from the 80s. I'm thinking I can probably spray paint these and then use, still use them. <laughs> and then I... I love the packaging so much I don't even want to open this but look at this $1.35 metallic rickrack hello gorgeous I didn't even know they made metallic rickrack and then I got in another like random grab bag you know you're just like they just throw everything in the kitchen sink in a bag and they price it you know two dollars four dollars or whatever so I got a grab bag and I bought just for these little cupid things and my husband's like those are so ugly what are you what Amanda come on what are you gonna make with that hello doctor who tree they're gonna be the creepy angels that don't blink angels I can spray paint them that like gray and they'll be the creepy angels on my Doctor Who tree because I have the I have the the angel uh, tree topper then I have all the TARDIS ornaments and then I hand painted if you ever see like really kind of wonky angels and you're like why do people buy these oh you buy them and then you like paint them gray and turn them into the creepy angels from Doctor Who so the more you know little tiny things Doctor Who tree embellishments metallic rickrack again nothing to do with counted cross stitch but I'm a crafter I'm a lover of all things hobby related I never met a hobby I didn't like <laughs> all right so this was really neat I got this and it's uh from Jim from the vice president and general manager of the sales and marketing office at Zweigert 
and it is a sample pack of it looks like it got sent to a shop owner and so I think I got um, it's part of my haul was from um, a previous shop owner and so in here are all the different uh, colors and sample basically a sample pack it's never been opened and I, I don't know what to do with it I, I kind of want to open it and see but then a part of me thinks it's part of like needle craft history and I shouldn't open it and then a part of me is going do I need to contact them and ask for sample packs? Do they sample pack stuff? I mean, I'm a designer, right? Does that count? I, yeah, does it count? I, okay. So I really want to go to Nashville. Like, I really want to go. I keep hearing about the amazing time people have at market and how it's unbelievable. I mean, you're busy. You don't even socialize because you're just meeting shop owners and selling and I know Cindy the last couple years has gone to market and she's works like 19 hour days the whole time she's there and it's gnarly but before I even started needlepoint or excuse me needle art cross stitch I thought I wonder what this market would be like and I just I really want to go but <sighs> anywho I, I guess I gotta show you my new designs yeah I you know what I've I have still have like all of this stuff to show you, but I will wait until next week and there'll be like a part two of my haul. Because I want to show you a couple of the new things that I've been working on. Okay. This is my beach please or beach please. I you know, however you wanna think of it. You could do it sassy or you could do it ex uh excited like. So there's um my topography beach please so just short simple sweet one color fast stitch on twilight blue 32 count linen I I did this uh, before going to Virginia Beach this year and I've been thinking about how I want to finish it and I'm really getting in my own way with finishing and I have I'm not been showing you guys my right, guys gals stitching friends I haven't been showing you my designs because I am getting caught up in being a perfectionist and getting caught up in having it 100% perfect and there was a phrase that they kept telling me in graduate school at Rutgers they said Amanda there's perfect and then there's done you sometimes you just need to be done it doesn't there is no such thing as being perfect I really like Teresa kitten stitcher she talks about the perfectly imperfect and I'm really trying to embrace that I am not perfect and to just show you what I'm doing and if you love it awesome and if you don't love it that's okay I mean I'm not everyone's cup of tea I'm I'm here with my like like wonky hair and my you know I, I'm gonna be me if you like me great thank you for coming back and if you don't I, I totally I totally get that so I'm gonna get out of my own way and show you my one of my new patterns and then I want to show you another pattern and I was gonna wait I was like you know what I need to stitch it it's not done it's not ready yet and then I realized by the time I stitch it it's gonna be too late you guys if you guys want to you guys and gals stitchy friends if you want to stitch it let's do it let's stitch it let's do a virtual stitch along let's do it together let's celebrate pumpkin spice okay let's celebrate the pumpkin spice lattes the pumpkin spice coffee creamers the pumpkin pie I mean autumn is around the corner we got white pumpkins yellow pumpkins we've got artisanal pumpkins and then you know 3.14 pie pi cuz math I mean math math and dessert and coffee I, and autumn and all of the fun things I just I had to I just it's not stitched but I'm gonna start stitching it and by that I mean I kitted it up this is the pattern I have it available for instant download and I'm gonna have the pattern available on my eBay store if you want a paper copy I do digital downloads because with tariffs and customs and being in the United States, it's cost prohibitive to send a paper pattern overseas. So you can download it. 
Or if you want a paper copy and you want a handwritten note from me, buy it on my eBay store. But this is what you get. So you get the pat the pattern. All right, I, I'm including a cover sheet. Then, then there's the color. Da, 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 really fast there, I just did it like. You get a color chart and it's over two pages. The design is 116 stitches across by 93 stitches tall. It's like seven and a quarter inch by five and something inches. Um, the centimeter approximation, it's the centimeters is, of course I don't have it written down. I'm sorry, I have the centimeters, I swear. Anywho, it's a small pattern and it uses 12 colors, uh, all DMC colors. So you can like run out to a big box store or order online at one of your favorite sh shops or your LNS. Can get the threads and this the the skin tone I did a little kind of like wonky mythical she's supposed to look a little off feel free to change the skin tone okay I I for, you know what you can change all the colors if you want just you know I, I want this to be yours so in the pattern you're also gonna get the directions and then you get a floss organizer printable and with that so I kit it up I printed out my floss organizer I used my hole punches and then I got all my threads together and it's pumpkin pie pi 3.14 on the numbers and here are the colors. And then you can stitch along with me. And the hashtag I'm gonna use is pumpkin pie spice sampler. Join in. Again, instant download or paper copy. The paper copy, it's gonna be a little bit more um, because of eBay fees, seller fees, and then the cost of me to print it out in color and you'll get like a handwritten note with your eBay order. So anywho, that's my pattern. I don't have the stitch model stitch to show you, but I'm gonna start stitching it and then maybe next year, you know, it'll be done and ready for the holiday season again. So that's my new, my two new pattern releases, uh, Beach Please and um, my Pumpkin Pie PI 3.14 Coffee Sampler. Anywho, there there we go. Oh, what else am I stitching? So I'm working on, I've got about 11 models that I'm stitching right now. So they're not ready to show. Some of them, again, I need to just finish them and show you. So the, the only pattern that I have that is not my design that I'm working on, I just grabbed a piece of fabric and started stitching. It's, um, it's a Hannah Spurlock design it's the little nursery farm scene I showed it in my first ever floss tube episode that I started stitching that so I just have the fence done with excuse me again with my patterns my downloads I, I have been creating the floss organizers and I love it if you all want to tell me if you'd be interested in some custom thread drop printables that I could have available I could design something custom where all you'd have to do is print them out and then cut out and then hole punch. So basically it would be like just me, I will create the template and then put some of my original artwork on it. I don't know. I I don't know if anybody would be interested in something like that. Uh, if so, I mean, tell me in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in and maybe a theme or something. Uh, obviously, I am not licensed to do anything like trademark wise, um, but my original artwork uh, yeah, I can maybe draw something up, do some custom thread drops. So let me know. I, uh, for my Flanders Field Poppy that I have available, um, on, di uh, digital download, I, I did make a floss organizer for that with my original artwork and I cut it out a little smaller and I, uh, was just kind of playing around with making a thread drop. And this is wonky cut. I, I I didn't use a template. So this was just my kind of um, attempt because not everybody likes floss organizers. They like thread drops. and So I was just playing around. And yeah, so 
that's some of the creative things that I've done this week that I can show you. And oh, and the mail I got uh, from my printer, I got uh, some some of my books in the mail. I've got some more out. Um, I guess I'll show at the end of the video if you want to watch the unboxing of me getting my stuff. <laughs> But or I'll just show you right now. So uh, I love the I love ukuleles. So I did a ukulele uh, writing journal. You know I love coffee. Here is my coffee uh, sketchbook with the chalkboard art theme. I did that. I made that book, and i restocked my springtime sketch and stitch for my ebay store so so it's in stock if you'd like to order it and it's also on amazon and then i got a couple of my new copies of my new design that i came out with and it was inspired by mid-century but also the kind of the bouquet floral motif out of samplers and then i wanted to put a bird on it so i made a kind of a wonky little bird so this is my chart and stitch graph paper book that I just came out with and this I I published it a couple weeks ago so it is on Amazon and it's um, my graph paper all right I want to thank you all again for joining me on this adventure if you told me 10 years ago that I would be on YouTube talking about my love for arts and crafts and showing you my love for treasure hunting I wouldn't have believed you and now this is my fifth video I'm so excited to talk with all of you. I love all the comments. I love everything. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna do my first ever giveaway. <laughs> I've never done a giveaway before and I'm really excited. So in the comments, don't say giveaway. Uh, please be 18. Uh, you can be international or in the United States. but I'm gonna give away one of my patterns and I'm gonna do uh, one of the digital downloads digital download pattern so um let me know let me know what you want do you want my uh pumpkin pie spice coffee latte sampler do you want rusty crusty do you want beach please do you want my flanders field poppy pattern just let me know uh comment below and then i'm gonna i'm gonna try my first ever random number generator and pick a winner and I'm, I'm just so thrilled that you all want to spend time with me. And I just feel so grateful. So thank you again. If you're new to my channel, I'd love it if you subscribed. And uh, I'll see you next week. Uh, be well. Happy stitching. Be crafty. Spread joy. I mean... I'm just so grateful. Thank you. Thank you all. I thank you. Be well. See you next week.